Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on my channel. In this video I'll show you three ways to calculate the net present value in Python. If you have no idea about the net present value, that's absolutely no problem as I'm covering a brief introduction here. And also this video is showing you to automate your stuff in Python so it's actually pretty worth it even if you have no idea about the NPV. So first of all, consider the given data out of an investment project. So we have an initial investment, CF0, so a cash flow at the time 0, of 1000 here. And this project is generating cash flows, CF1 and CF2, of 600 in the first year and 700 in the second year. The interest rate on the market is 5%, which is just telling me, okay, I could also invest in a market instead of investing in this project, getting an interest rate of 5%. So what is the net present value, or in short, NPV, all about? Well, it's just telling me, is this project worth it if I'm taking the interest rate into consideration? And a net present value of bigger than zero is telling me it's worth to invest in this project. All in all together, the NPV is the sum of the discounted cash flows. So let's actually code that in Python. Let's define NPV as our variable, which we are defining as. Now discount the first cash flow by CF0 divided by 1 plus our interest rate, which is 0.045, to the power of and then the actual point in time, which is 0 in this case. Now we add the second cash flow, or the first cash flow to be more specific, divided by 1 plus interest rate, and then to the power of 1 point in time. And last but not least, we are getting the second cash flow divided by 1 plus interest rate to the power of 2. And that's it. So let's print this out and see what happens. Well, we are getting an NPV of 206.35, which is telling us, okay, it's definitely worth it to invest in this project. And that's it. So how can we avoid all those tipping stuff here? Well, we can create a loop. Before looping, we have to create an iterative object, which could be, for example, a list. So let's create a list, we call this cash flows, of those cash flow elements here. So we're just containing our cash flows here and printing this out afterwards. So we got this list of those cash flows. In case you don't know what's happening here, just click my video on this in the introduction part. Now let's reset our NPV variable, which is stored here right now, at zero. So creating the loop we have to apply for i in range and now let's think about what makes sense here. Which range makes sense? Well, we could just take the length of this list here. So let's take length of the cash flows. And then we have to define NPV as NPV plus and now we are just doing what we did above here. So we are starting with the cash flows and we are assessing the very first element. So we are just taking i here, which is an index value of this list. So this loop is going through this list from 0, which is the first element here, then 1, which is the second one, and then 2, which is the third one. So this is covering this one here, or this one here, or this one here. Now we have to divide as we did here above. So we have to do the exact same thing. So we are just saying interest rate and then to the power of, and as we did here, we just take the point of time here. So 0, 1, and 2. So we are taking i here because it's the same. i is starting at 0, then 1, then 2. Now afterwards, we just print out this NPV value and see if everything went better than expected. And as we see, we are getting the exact same NPV as above. So it works pretty nice. But this is not our final form. So let's continue by defining a function out of that. 
So let's define our NPV and define arguments as interest rate and of course our cash flows, right? Now, first of all, we do an automatic reset of NPV in this function, okay? After that, we are just copy pasting this here because it's the same thing here. So we are copy pasting that and of course we need an indentation here. And then we need to return this NPV afterwards, okay? So that's it. We defined an NPV function in Python. So does this work? Well, let's find it out. Let's call this function by NPV and then we are taking just the same as above, the interest rate of 5%, so 0.05. So, and then we're just taking our list of cash flows from above, right? So we are just typing in cash flows here. Oh. Let's see what happens. And you see, we're getting the exact same value as above. And the cool thing about this function is you can just type in whatever you like here. You can define a new cash flow uh, list and uh, a new interest rate and just call the function with, with other parameters. So see what is happening with this project. If the interest rate is increasing, for example, to 10%, you see that the NPV is decreasing to 123, right? So pretty nice, but I have to disappoint you, someone was faster than us. So this function is already existent in NumPy. So I'm just showing you, you can import NumPy as NP and run just np.npv and then you are defining our parameters, so 5% and the cash flows. And if we execute that, you're getting our MPV from above. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this video helped. See you next time. Bye bye.